Welcome to Radical Living. We're so excited you joined us again this week as we dig into the Word of God, as we make the Word of God a priority in our life. You know, in times like this especially, it is so important that the Word is the foundation of our walk with the Lord. And you know, we're so Amen. privileged that we still have an opportunity to be able to read the Word of God, to, to study it, and to spend time in it. You know, take a moment today, like and share this broadcast, share it with all your friends and, and the people that you know. This will be a blessing uh, uh, for their life. You know, we want to spend today and probably the next couple of weeks and look into the Father's heart. You know, there was a mm. message that spoke to me a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago when, when I when I read something and we want to just use these next couple of weeks to look what, at the Father's heart and you know what, what that looks like. You know the Word of God says in 1 John 3, 1, see how much the Father loves, loves us for he calls us his children and that is what we are. You know this is yeah. such a blessing. It, but, but before we really get into the Word today, let's open up with a word of prayer. Let's condition our heart. Let's activate our faith to really receive from him today and apply it to our walk with the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to spend with you, to spend in your word. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, for wisdom today, that you will reveal your word to us, Lord Jesus, that it, made, uh, that it may take fruit in our lives, Lord Jesus, that we can apply it in our lives, Lord Jesus. Give us eyes to uh, see and ears to hear, Father, and a heart that is wide open today mm. to receive the truth from your word, Lord Jesus. We yes. give you praise. We give you glory. Father, thank you for your love that you have for each one of us Lord and that we can learn uh, your heart today in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen you amen. know a father's heart desires a relationship of intimacy and you know I remember when this girl right here was was born you know her daddy from the first moment he saw her was completely smitten by her you know she stole <laughs> his little heart just within in a you know, from this day on, it was his passion in life. It was his desire to build a strong, healthy relationship with his of intimacy, you know. But he tells me, you know, whenever he's home, whenever he's here, he wants to have the time to bring the kids to bed, you know, where he blesses them, where he prays over them. When, when they were little, he would use that time, you know, to mentor them to tell stories that you know we struggled with during the day and he would apply it in his stories that that he would he would tell and yeah. you know therefore you know there is was a real bond you know there is a real relationship that our kids have with their dad you know when melody was just a little taught you know as soon as she would hear just daddy coming home as soon as that key was hitting the door she would drop everything that she was doing and she would run towards daddy and she would want to spend all the time with him, you know, she would in, um, imitate her dad in everything that her, that he was doing. If he was <laughs> eating something, she needed to eat something. And he, if he was reading his Bible, even long before she could read, she would grab a book and she would sit next to him. You know, and I, I still remember, you know, uh, in our crusade ministry, you know, sometimes she would just stand there at, at the bottom of the stage and just would look up at her daddy. I never had to check, is she behaving in service? What is she doing? What is she up to? She would just stand there and watch, take everything in. You know, she was drawn to the ministry from a very young age on. You know, when he was home, they would play house underneath his desk. You know, after he, he, he stopped preaching, they would gather their dolls and their stuffed animals and they lined them up and then they started preaching just like daddy <laughs> did. You know, whenever we were, we were around the body of water, they played baptism. You know, that was just the way it is because it comes, you know, things like this comes from a strong, healthy relationship with their father. And you see, that is exactly the kind of heart our Heavenly Father has for us, you know, and if right. that is not the case, if you don't know him as that loving father yet, you know, that's the, this, that's the relationship that he desires uh, for you and, and, and him to have. And, you know, there is a really uh, great example in, in the Bible, a great story that we want to look at today a little bit closer. You know, it's a story that we all know really, really well. You know, it's a story of the prodigal son. We all have heard it many, many times. You know, it, it is the story of a, of a son who rebelled and dishonored his own father. You know, a, a, the story of a 
who uh, demanded his, in his inheritance um, way early and he wanted to go out into the world and spend it and that's what he did you know he, he went out and he spent it on foolish things you know and, yeah. and after all the money was gone after all his friends were gone because they just loved him for his money he found himself probably at the lowest point of his life you know not even able to uh, afford food anymore and so he found himself eating the pig's food and it was in that moment where he remembered his father you know where he remembered the kind of father that he had at home the kind of relationship that he had with his father he, he you know his loving father his generous father and he made up his mind to go back home to repent and to to come uh, clear with his dad and, and you know he was not even looking anymore for a, a position of a son but he was he would have just been happy to just be his servant and you know there is a couple of verses in in the word of god that i want to read with you guys today um luke 15 17 through 20 if you have your bible just look uh, into this with me luke 15 i'm starting at verse 17 and it says here when he finally came to his senses he said to himself at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare and here i am dying of hunger i will go home to my father and say father i have sinned against both heaven and you and i am no longer worthy to being called your son please take me on as a hired servant so he returned home to his father and while he was still a long way off his father saw him coming filled with love and compassion he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him and you mm. and you know there is this one phrase in there that really stuck stood out to me that phrase that really shows the heart of the father so well and in, in the, it, it says but while he was still a long way off his father right. saw him and was filled with compassion for him you know this phrase right there gives us an exact glimpse of the father's heart you know he was looking for his for his son long before the son ever decided to come home long before he had he had hit rock bottom long before the son made uh, up his mind to go home and and come clean with his dad you know every morning the dad would scan the horizon to see if there is a silhouette appearing uh, of, of his son. You know, every night before he turned into bed, he would go out and, and look again into the distance if there was some movement coming. And, you know, I was when, when I was reading this, I were, was reminded of a time when we as a family lived in, in, in Kenya. You know, my husband does a lot of outreaches, a lot of crusade and evangelism. And he travels a lot he's gone a lot and um, in this particular crusade the girls and I stayed home we couldn't go with him but my husband would tell me you know we would come we were coming home Sunday night again you can expect us around this and this time and so I was waiting I, I stayed up and I was waiting mm -hmm. because you know I wanted to hear the wonderful reports of what the Lord had been doing you know this was 20 years ago you know there was not much of uh, co uh, communication possible uh, during the week so I you know I was waiting for them to come home I wanted to greet the team back home and see how everything went and you know the time came and the time went that my husband said this is approximately the time that we, that we would be home and, and I, I remember stay, staying at the window just looking out in, into the dark you know our house that we were living in in Kenya at the time stood uh, very high on a hill and I could see over the valley and I could see very very clear during the day into the distance to the mountains and I knew the very street they would come come down to and uh, come down from and on that night I was standing just looking into the night looking into the distance that of that of that sign of light you know from mm -hmm. a car mm -hmm. coming home and it was hours and hours and hours later actually that they came then compared to the time that he had told me because you know they had a little accident and our trailer with all our equipment tripped and so they had to fix it on the road and oh, so wow. therefore there was a big delay but I remember standing there on that window 
for hours praying for a safe return, longing mm. for them to coming home, just looking into this distance. And mm -hmm. you see this exactly how that father of the prodigal son fell, you know, felt, you know, he was constantly, his son was constantly on his mind. You know, he, he, right. he, he, he had such a heart and such a love for, for his son that he couldn't wait for them to uh, come home. And you see, that's exactly how our heavenly father views the lost. Mm -hmm. You know, he's waiting for them to coming home, to come to the realization that they need a savior. You know, it's the yeah. kind of love that he had for you and, and for me, if you know him as your father, you mm -hmm. know, before we came to him. It is the kind of love, the, uh, how he embraced us when when we gave our life to Christ. But you see, as, as sadly, so many times we, over the years, especially if we have walked with the Lord for a long time, we lose that compassion for the lost and for the people mm. around us a little bit. You know, we think we are better than everybody else and, and uh, we, we don't have that same compassion that, that we used to have. You know, right. we see a drunk person in town and, you know, we, we turn our 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 eyes away, our face away, and we look at them with disgust. You know, we, we, we come across a mother who is really struggling with her screaming children, you know, in the grocery store or on the airplane. We see that a lot. And, you know, we give them correcting looks. You know, we talk um, about our neighbors behind their back because they're living a different lifestyle than what we are living. You know, we're, we're looking down on, on our friends and sometimes even writing them off completely because they decide to, to, to do different decisions than how we would have handled a, a situation, you know. And what really, really spoke to me in those couple of verses when I was when I was studying this, when I was reading about this myself a couple of weeks ago, and what really birthed this message today is that the Father has such a different heart, you know. He doesn't see people the way we see them, you know. And my question uh, for you and for me today is, do we share that same heart as the Father has for the lost, the same heart, uh, the same longing, the same desire to see lives changed in people's heart. You know, in 1988, there was a devastating earthquake in the country of Armenia. Is that how you see it? Armenia? I think so, yeah. Armenia, Armenia? Yeah, looks like it. Anyway, <laughs> there was a really devastating earthquake in this in the in this country and, and especially in one region of that country and after everything was done there was a young father who ran to the school of his son because he wanted to see if his son was okay if his son has survived and what was going on and to his great shock and to his great astonishment when he got to that school the school was no longer existing it was completely flat to the ground wow. there was nothing left other than rubble and and dis and destruction and you know, that father remembered a conversation that he had with his son so, so many times over the years. And he would always tell him, no matter what, I will always be there for you when you need me. And with that in mind, he started digging. He started removing the debris. He started removing the rabble and everything that was laying on. He, he approximately could tell this might be where the classroom of my son used to be. And he started digging while, you know, other parents also gathered but they just wailed in 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 uh, in hopelessness mm. the loss of their children and they even encouraged him you know to to give to give it up because they saw nothing but but hopelessness but this father had a different heart he wow. was looking for his son and he wouldn't give up he was the only one working and he digged for 38 hours all by himself not giving up and then in this 38 hour, he came to a massive, I don't know, was it a piece of rock or a rebel or whatever it was, but as he was lifting that piece aside, all of a sudden he heard a voice and he recognized it as his own son's voice. And he, he shouted in there and he said, son, is this you? And the little voice Aww. answered and said, daddy, yes, it is me. You know, in fact, I have been telling my friends here all along, don't worry. If my father is alive, I know he will look for me because he always said, no matter what, I will be there for you. Wow. And you know, just moments later, not only was his son uh, rescued, but 13 other children, they were hungry, they were 
dirty, they were thirsty, Aww. but they were alive because you know that father mm -hmm. had a heart for his son and he was not willing to give up. You, you know, and just like this father had such a heart for his son, our heavenly father has the same heart for, for the people alive today. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's not giving up on us. It doesn't matter how your situation look like. You know, he, he is waiting for you. The question is, you know, can he count on me and you? You know, you see, we're not, um, we were not created to live self-centered lives. We were not created to in, to to just enjoy lives and go from one thing to the next, from one vacation yeah. to the next, from the new house to the next, from a new car or whatever it, it may be. And even though those are wonderful blessings and the Lord rejoices and he wants to see us blessed, but that is not the main purpose while we are alive. You know, we were created to spread the good news. We were mm -hmm. created to reach the lost. We were created to make a difference in the world mm -hmm. and my question to you today have you lost your heart for the lost for the people around you mm -hmm. can the Lord count on you you know to the people that he placed specifically in your life mm -hmm. you know there is people in in your realm of influence that don't know Christ today and you were placed there for a reason he wants to use you but are you willing to you know Instead of looking away the next time when you see somebody that is so different in you, that looks different and that uh, does things different to you, that even smells different, you know, instead of looking away, why don't we go up to them and start a conversation, try to interact, try right. to reach that person with the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, now more than ever, you know, we need to come to the realization that, you um you know, Jesus could come back any any day, mm -hmm. and there are still people that we can take with us that, that need to hear the life-changing message of Jesus Christ, and He needs you. You know, He needs you to be brave. He needs you to be courageous. He needs you to uh, steer away from self-centeredness mm -hmm. and really get a heart for the people around you. Yeah, you know, we can have the same heart that the Lord has, as, as she's already shared, the heart of God is so wonderful, it's so precious, and He wants us to have that same outlook, that same heart um, for the lost. And I kind of want to take a different approach this week than I usually do. Um, she, you know, my mom was talking about really what the heart of God looks like, and I kind of want to look at the opposite of what our heart shouldn't look like, um, and kind of take it from that perspective of almost like what not to do um, in that so we can read really even understand it better and deeper and um, in that, I want to um, take a look, a deeper look at the Pharisees, because we see when Jesus was alive, um, many times they were the ones, they were kind of, you know, butting heads in a way, um, because they looked at things very differently than the way Jesus looked at it. So kind of taking some of the characteristics, some of the things that we see in them, um, that we should not be doing, you know, we should we should be living more um, like how Jesus Jesus lived, and we see most of the time the Pharisees they were kind of um, their hearts were kind of hard towards the lost, their hearts were hard towards the needs of others, um, you know, of, of poor people and and all 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 of these kind of things like that. Um, so we kind of, I kind of want to dive into that today, and I want, I want to start out with a story, kind of to give us a little bit of a, of a reference point of, of what I'm going to be talking about here, and it's in um, Luke 18, verses uh, 9 through 14, and it says, "Then Jesus told this story to someone who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not a sinner like everyone else, for I don't cheat, I don't sin, and I don't commit adultery. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you this, sinner, not the Pharisee returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. You know, so many times we can be 
um, like this Pharisee and almost pray these kind of prayers and maybe not directly like this, but many times we really think we're such good people. We're so good. And then we get into the presence of God and we realize, okay, I'm, I'm not that good. There's a lot of things that I need to yeah. work on um, in my heart in everything that's going on. Um, so we want to have more of that heart of, um, of that tax collector, you know, more of the heart like God, where we say, Lord, um, I, I need to change in my life. I need to um, adjust things so I can have a heart of compassion, so I can have a heart like you. And so I want to um, kind of cover three things, um, three aspects of um, what the Pharisees' hearts looked like. And the first thing is, is that they would be very critical of people. They would criticize basically everyone and everything that people did and criticism is basically just expressing um, adverse or disapproving comments or judgments so if someone looked differently than them um, you know they would be critical of them if someone acted differently than how they acted like you know like this guy he's like I fast um, twice a week and you know this guy doesn't fast um, you know they would be critical I'm sure many of them um, gossiped like so many of us do today when we see those kind of things when we when we see um, that going on, you know, I, I've heard many stories of people who come in, um, come into church and they don't even feel welcome in church just because they look different. You know, maybe they have tattoos all over their body. Maybe they, they've been, you know, stuck on drugs their whole life. And, you know, they come in with the looks of that, um, but they don't feel, even feel welcome in church because what does everyone do instead of trying to go and speak to that person, you know, trying to reach them for Christ, everyone starts, you know, making jokes about them or talking behind their back or even in their face um, sometimes. Um, instead. You know, instead of really having that heart for that person, sure, they may look different. They may still be, um, you know, in their sinful life, but they're here at church trying to get the help that they need. So we need to, you know, extend that that help, be that um person and it reminds me even of um, you know Samuel in the Bible when he's going to um, anoint the next king which was um, David he goes through all the other brothers first and he's like man this guy he looks good he looks like he's strong like he's muscular you know he sees all these things these outward appearances basically and he's like Lord surely this is the one surely this is the one and the Lord every time nope nope and at the end he says he says you know I don't look at appearances like you you people do basically basically. Um, man looks at the outward appearance, what's going on, but God looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. And we can have that same thing too, where we say, okay, I don't care what the outside appearance looks like. I don't care if you look totally different than me. Um, all that matters is the heart. That's and true. that's that's how we um, we can look at things too. And I'm even just, um, my little sister, Michaela, um, about a year ago, I think she told me this, she started to realize herself that she was becoming very critical um, just of, of people around her, of, of things. And so she, I remember her telling me we were on a walk as a family and we got into conversation, just us, us three sisters. And she was saying, you know, that she had realized she'd gotten very critical of people or even just judgmental. These thoughts would come into her mind. So she said that she started basically practicing every time a critical thought or a judgmental thought would come into her mind. She would try to contradict that by thinking of at least one or more um, things that are good about that person or that thing. She would even practice it with like normal things. Like some, we, 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 I remember we were walking by a house and I was like, oh, that's, that's um, a funny looking color for a house. And she's like, but look at the beautiful flowers, you know, mm -hmm. at that house. So she would, even, even in natural things, she was trying to retrain her mind um, to basically look at the good and not just at the critical. So with people, if, if a thought would come to her mind, she would think, okay, but what are two or three good things that I that are you know about this person and we can do the same thing it's just a simple little practice um, but uh, man I started doing it too and I was like wow this really works because then you start focusing on the positive side of people not the negative side um, so I learned a lot for, from my little sister um, that day but but it was it was great um, the second thing that the Pharisees did is that they um, tried to protect, protect their traditions rather than obeying the Word of God. Um, protect the things that the rules, the things that they had made, you know, above the, the Bible. Um, they tried to protect that more than even obeying the Word of God, more than following the Word of God. 
um, my dad the other day um, while we were um, jogging together, he was telling me that in South Africa um, several years ago, um, there was this thing that, that kind of started. It was called the apartheid, which I'm sure many of you have heard about. Basically what happened in South Africa is all of a sudden, um, I don't even know how it started. I don't remember what he said there, but they started to make everything kind of like um, a racial issue in a way. So everything was black versus white all of a sudden. They would have, um, and I'm talking about like skin color, um, they would have um, all of a sudden only restaurants that were for only white people. Uh, certain restaurants were only for black people. Churches that were only for white people. Churches that were only for black people. The country became totally divided, um, which before they weren't at all. They were totally, you know, um, intermingling together. Um, but because, you know, this, this whole thing was going on, everyone started to protect that tradition, basically, even in the government, um, in churches, everywhere. Um, it was a huge deal. And I remember he told me that um, there was a there was a guy from India, which I'm sure many of you guys have heard about, um, Mahatma Gandhi, which basically everyone knows as Gandhi. Um, he went to one of these churches while he was in South Africa, and it happened to be a white church. And being Indian, of course, he had darker skin. Um, and um, the ushers came and actually asked him to leave church and said, instead of being there um, and later on in his life he um, he has a quote that says um, I would have become a Christian if it wasn't for Christians and so we see you know just because of a tradition that they were trying to keep up with everyone else in the country we're gonna make this a black versus white thing that you know it someone could have been saved because of that he probably maybe that was the day that he would have um, given his life to the Lord but just because they were trying to protect that that tradition that wasn't even biblical, um, you know, he, um, he was, you know, lost. I, I don't know if he, if he ever got saved, but, you know, um, we need to focus on what does the Word of God say more than traditions or, or the things that go on. You know, the Bible says to seek and save the lost, to preach the gospel to all creation, no matter what they look like, no matter what, yes. what it, what it is. Um, so that's, that's the second thing we need to, um, trust the word of God more than trying to protect our traditions. And the third thing that the Pharisees did is um, they focused very much on themselves and not on others. Mm -hmm. They were very self-absorbed, very prideful, constantly, you know, like he even says in this prayer, you know, I don't cheat, I don't commit adultery, I don't do these things like this tax collector. Um, those, you know, that was kind of like their heart, the way that they looked at things, that, that they were totally just focused on themselves, how good they could be how good they were rather than looking at others and saying hey is there someone around me that needs help is there a poor an orphan or a widow or someone you know who needs help that I can go and help today um, so that's you know we can have that heart like my mom was already saying that compassion for those around us you know what are the what are the needs of the people around us what are what do they need what's going on in other people's lives rather than always just being focused on ourselves mm -hmm. um, we talked about this even um, you know in our uh, basically three week series on prayer how you know so many times we can be selfish even in our prayers or we just pray for me myself and I the <laughs> whole time you know rather than praying for the lost praying um, for other people and and you know we can. Um, I like to. I like to um, think of it this way. We should have a regular heart checkup. And I'm talking about before the Lord, not you know in the in the doc in the physical doctor sense. Go to the Lord and have a regular heart checkup and say, Lord, what is going on in my heart? What do I need to change in my life? Is my heart the same heart like you? What are the things I need to adjust? Yeah. And if we do that, we won't be like the Pharisees. We won't do these things like I've been saying but we will have that heart like, like that father and the prodigal son where we keep looking um, in the distance and say, okay, what, what do I need to be doing? Who, who needs help today? Who do I need to intercede for um, today? That's the heart that we can have, yes. um, you know, and that's the heart that we should desire to have. Um, so that's all we wanted to really um, share mm -hmm. today, but let's go ahead and pray um, to close out bef before we head out. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much um, for, for your heart, Lord God, that your heart loves us unconditionally, no matter um, what goes on in our lives, Lord, that we can always seek to please you um, with everything that we do. Um, God, I ask that you give us a heart like your heart, that you will soften our hearts, where we will have a regular 
regular heart checkup with you and say, Lord, what are the things that need to be changed in our lives? What are the things that need to be different? Lord, where we can come to you um, with anything and say, Lord, maybe I am too critical and I need to adjust that. Um, maybe I do focus more on traditions than the Word of God or I'm too focused on myself and we can make those adjustments. I pray for everyone watching that you will give them a soft heart, a heart of compassion for the lost. Lord, that we can seek and save the lost like your Word says and, and just share the gospel with all creation, Lord God, that we will have that heart for others, that heart of compassion. I thank you, Lord. I praise you. I give you all glory today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for watching. Yes. We love you guys. Remember, you were created to make a difference in this world. Amen. Go out today, tell somebody about the Lord, and remember, Christ is the answer.